Okay, so now we have our two wheels, just our free rotating wheels on the robot. We're now going to work on our drive wheels. Now, a little bit about drive um, of your robot. Honestly, you can make your robot two-wheel, four-wheel drive. You can make it controlled with two motors or four motors. Um, there's so many different combinations. Um, you can make a four-wheel drive robot controlled by two motors. You can take, make a four-wheel drive robot obviously controlled by four motors. Um, so it's kind of up to you um, how, on how you do this. We're going to make this controlled by two motors. And actually, we're going to do both drives differently um, just to show you the different options. You would never do this on an actual robot. Make one drive. We're going to make one direct drive. We're going to make one a chain drive. You would never actually do that on a, on a robot you're competing with. Um, but I just want you to see both ways of doing it. All right. So to get started here. What we're going to start with is, um, we're going to start with the chain drive motor. And it, the starting setup of it is going to be very similar to what you've already done back here. So you're going to put on this um, little U channel, this little um, channel first. You're going to put your axle through it. Um, you're going to put your axle offset the same. Remember that was 0.5 inches offset to the inside. You're going to put the one, um, or you're going to put the bearings in. And you're going to put the one... Um, uh, shaft collar on this side. And that's where the similarities are going to stop. Um, after that, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So again, C channel, or U channel, sorry, channel, axle, bearings, shaft collar on this side. Remember that's a half an inch that that shaft sticks out. Get that done. I'm going to do it, and we'll come back to the video in just a moment. Okay, so I've got this just as what I mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, we got this put together here with the um, channel on there. Notice the channel, I put it in the same position as I did before, which is one, two of the main holes back. Um, got my shaft in there. Got my bearing on each side. Um, got my um, shaft put through it. I already said shaft, I guess. And then I got the shaft collar down here. Now, this is where it's going to start to get a little bit different. Um, over in our main folder... We're going to go down to our coupler folder. Remember, we uploaded a couple, uh, a couple of couplers. So we're going to go into there. Oh, I, not couplers, um, hubs, sorry, hubs. Remember, we uploaded a couple of different hubs. We're going to pull in this other hub this time. So we're going to pull it over and put it into the drawing. Let's see where it placed. All right. I'm going to rotate this around 90 degrees. Ah, oh, come on. Hard to get a hold of there. And I want it so the, and I'll zoom in on it here so you guys can see it. Let me get it rotated first. I want it to where this, this not flat side of it is sticking out um, towards the outside of the object. So I'm going to go OK there. And then I'm going to put that into place. Um, for that, the side that is flush, let me rotate it around here. The side that is flush, I'm going to put it on right where our other shaft collar would have went that we did over here. So this is going to serve kind of a dual purpose. It's going to be the shaft collar that holds the axle into place. And it's also going to be what we're going to mount a gear to. So we put that in place right there. Awesome. You tighten down this little set screw that should be up there. Tighten that down. And that's what's going to hold that in place. Ah, And if we notice here, our set screw is left over there. We do need to put our set screw in there, so let's go joint. Um, I'm just going to put the joint to the top of the set screw. I think that's going to be fine. That top section of the set screw. And we're going to stick it right down here inside of this hole. Uh, come on. That is hard to select. I want the center of it selected, and it's not... Uh, I don't know if I got the center point there or not. Let's see. Oh, I don't think I did. Hmm. That's a little bit frustrating. I'm going to have to play with that. Okay. Um, so, I hate this, but I found a little bit of a workaround. I don't love it. If you find a better solution than this, that's going to be great. Um, all right, so what I ended up doing is this, is find the center point of this pin here um, to join it. So I'm going to go a joint there. I'm going to come over to here. I could not get it to select the center point of the circle. 
Um, it just would not go out there and select the center point. So what I ended up doing, I ended up just putting it over here on one of the quadrants of the circles right there. That quadrant showing up. I joined it to there. And now I just adjusted this and put it in a place so that looked looked as close as possible. So right there I'm at minus 0.07. There's 0 0.08. Looks pretty close. Right there looks pretty good. If you can't get it centered up perfectly by pulling it. Ooh, actually that one got a little bit closer. You can just type in a number. If you want to go 0 0.095 or 0 0.1, whatever. But right there, that is close enough. I will be happy as can be with that if that's in there, that getting joined there. So we're just going to go OK. Not the way I love to do it, but it's our workaround that we're going to do here. And right there. There's that set screw looking great right there. OK. So next, um, something else I just happened to notice is... I did not rotate this um, before when I put it on. Um, this should have been rotated to where this flat spot lined up. Again, I'm not going to be too worried about that. That's okay. So let's just move on. So moving on. Now we're going to attach a sprocket onto this. So we're going to go here to sprockets. Um, here you can do a lot of different gear ratios. Um, these are just a very few of the options of the gears, and or sorry, gears, I said gears, sprockets that you can get. Um, we're going to do a two to one ratio, um, meaning that the motor will spend, um, or sorry, the wheel will spend two times for every one time the motor spins. So it's going to be actually gearing this robot up um, to give this robot a little bit more speed. Oh, wait, no, I'm doing that wrong. Um, give this robot a little bit more power. Um, yeah, sorry, we're slowing it down. Robot, I said that backwards. The motor will turn one time, um, or, or for, for every, gosh, I'm saying this totally wrong. For every two times the motor will turn, the wheel will turn one time, which gives it more power, but makes it go slower. All right, so with all that being said, um, we're going to use the six, or sorry, the 32 tooth um, gear or sprocket on here so let's just pull it over and i'll stop talking so I'll pull that over there we're gonna have to rotate this around and let me see in that direction 90 degrees it shouldn't matter which way it goes i believe it's the same um on both sides just a flat piece i'm gonna pull this a little bit closer right to maybe there and go okay uh, i'm just gonna put this in place let's go ahead and assemble it um here this little kind of shoulder here that sticks out um, the gear actually sits down over top of that it helps center it up so we're going to take this back side take the center point of this back side here and we're going to make it line up with the bottom of the circle here put that in place there nicely loving it notice how the bolt holes line up we're going to go okay so right there that sprockets put in place nicely right there mounted onto there all right Next thing we need to do is we need to get our wheel on there. Um, I'll go ahead and throw that in real quick. You've already done the wheels. I think you should be able to handle this, but I'll go ahead and remind you of the wheels. So um, first, before the wheels, I suppose we should throw in a hub. So we're going to go hub. Remember, that was the little bit longer hub. So we're going to throw in this hub here. I'm going to rotate that around in the right orientation. Sometimes it's hard to get too, because it sticks it there underneath the robot. I'm just going to pull it out there first off. There we go. Now I'm going to spin this around like that, 90 degrees. I'm just going to go OK there. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put this into place. Uh, I'm going to use joint. I'm going to go to this top surface of it here. And if you don't remember, we put that to the end of the shaft. To there. And I think it's going to work the same, just so our wheels stay lined up. We're going to offset it in um, 0.75. So we're going to go in mine. It looks like no, just 0.75. 0.75. Perfect. And go OK. All right. I think that's going to work. Let's make sure. Yeah, look at that. Still a little gap there. It doesn't interfere with our sprocket. And now we're going to put our wheel on. Um, do you also remember your two bolts got left here? So you're going to have to put your bolts back on there. You're going to have to put your wheel there. Remember when you put your wheel there, the wheel separates into two separate parts. And get this wheel centered up. You added a little tiny bit of a gap here um, to get it approximately centered at least. I think we did that at 0 0.02, if I remember correctly. I'm going to stop the video and let you guys get that. Okay, 
So there that other wheel is mounted onto place or into place, um, offset there nicely. Um, if we look at it here, it should line up. Yeah, look how nice it lines up with that other wheel. So that's awesome. All right, next, what we're gonna do is next we have to put in a motor to drive that wheel. So we're gonna put in a motor. We're gonna put it here on the bottom side. So we just flip the robot kind of upside down. Uh, we're gonna come over here to this, uh, back to your main folder. Scroll down to motor mounts. And there's really only one option of a motor mount, so we're going to pull that one over. All right, so for that motor mount, we're going to put that motor mount on there. Now, this is weird. We noticed this, I guess, before we put this in there, how that motor mount comes in at a weird angle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over here close to this edge, something like that. And I know it has to be rotated some, so we're going to, whoa, not in that direction, though. Let me get that back needs to be rotated in this direction. So I'm going to rotate this as close as I can. Um, it's weird here how it pulls it at this angle. And I put it right there pretty close lined up to this edge. Now I know it's not perfect there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to this view looking straight on the top. And here I just need to adjust that angle a little bit. Um, so this angle, let's look over here. All right, it's this one here. It says it's five degree now there. Five degrees wrong, so let's go four. Um, eh, four degrees isn't quite right. Let's go three. Uh, three isn't quite right. Let's go two and a half. Ooh, two and a half is getting close. Maybe not quite enough, though. 2.2. Oh, right there. I think 2.2 looks pretty darn close. See how close it lines up with these holes? And that's going to be good. And that's what you're going to have to do is adjust that just a little bit so it's right there as close as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. So let's go ahead and go OK and place that there all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to place this motor or put this put this motor mount into place um really honestly i don't care it doesn't matter which side you have this little tightener or tensioner on it whether it's in the front or the back of the robot i really don't care uh, but now we're going to put this into place we kind of have to look to see where these holes are going to line up at so let's see here um right there do those holes line up I don't know. They don't. Uh, let's see. Ah, those holes line up. So there's a pair and then another pair of hole lines up with that. Um, in approximately the middle. So it looks like you're not going to be able to get it centered up perfectly. I honestly think this is a little bit too close. So let's go back this direction a little bit. All right, so you can see the pair and the pair of holes. We're going to line it up with those two outside holes. And I think that's going to be great. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go joint. And joint the center of that hole right there. Rotate this around to the center of that hole right there. Let's go OK. It's out there on the outside of it. That looks awesome. It looks great. When you're actually building your robot, you guys are going to have to kind of play with where you want that, whether you want it one more in this direction or, or where. But right here is going to work for this robot. All right, so that looks beautiful. Now let's go ahead and put in a motor. All right, go over here to our folder go to motors um it's going to be this is a good question i'm pretty sure it's the never rest motor and actually i know the motors have changed around they have a lot of different motors so it honestly doesn't matter right now because i know your motor choices are going to be different um, next year so that's all good i'm going to rotate the motor around like so looks good okay and let's put this motor into place all right so we're going to come over here. We're going to join this motor into place. I'm going to go with this large circle there. Lined up with this large circle here. And put that motor there. Now, the thing that I want you to kind of look at here is, with it placed right here, are we going to be able to get that sprocket in the place where we need it? I think it's going to be close. You know, honestly, we may have to move this motor back a little bit. We'll kind of play that by ear for now. Right now, I'm just going to leave it flush on that end. I think that's good. We're going to go OK. All right. So now, for this, the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put a hub on here. And you're going to have to put a sprocket on there. And you want that sprocket lining up with this sprocket. Now, um, we really can't adjust this sprocket in and out, really, unless we put a color on there. So we may have to add something like that. This is going to be kind of something you're going to have to play with when you do your design of your robot. Um, we may actually have to change this motor mount back to over here. 
We're going to play with that a little bit, but that's going to be in the next video. Um, good luck up to this point.